Hello and welcome to today's webinar from GMA Solutions on ROHS requirements. My name is Teresa Glenna. I am a senior technical sales manager for our global market access group at TubeSuit. I have more than 18 years of global market experience and 25 years of experience within the TubeSuit America group. I'm a senior member of the US GMA team and I'm dedicated to providing upfront support to ensure our customers obtain the correct information to make informed decisions about their global market plans. I have a wide knowledge base for obtaining approvals for various product types, ranging from wireless and information technology equipment to household appliances, machinery, and lots more. So ROHS stands for Restriction of Hazardous Substances. Many people refer to this as ROHAS. Many people refer to it as just ROS. Throughout this presentation, I will use either the full name, Restriction of Hazardous Substances, or ROHAS. I don't think either of them are right or wrong. It's just whatever people have uh, deduced from that acronym. So we, the purpose of this presentation is to help you understand the requirements for several mandatory ROHS schemes worldwide. And you can use this as a guide to keep up to date with ROHAS initiatives and the regulations in these regions that we'll cover. So we have 12 different countries and regions that we will go over today. And we're going to start with the European Union. The European ROHAS regulation is the basis of the regulations across the rest of the world. So this is why we start with Europe. The European scheme is called CE ROHS. So it's part of the CE marking scheme. Um, it is a mandatory regulation and um, it is a self-declaration scheme, although you can get a certificate from a, an accredited body if you wish. The testing can be done at any accredited lab. It doesn't have to be testing in Europe. And the labeling follows the CE marking scheme. This is the list of restricted substances for ROHS. You can see the first six substances are bolded here. That's because the regulation started with just these six. And then when ROHAS 2 came out, um, which was the, the next rendition of the scheme, they added four more substances. So now we have a total of 10. And you'll see this um, as a common thread throughout the rest of the schemes that we'll talk about today. They start with the first six and then either have not yet added the last four or have already added the four and are up to date with the European scheme. So now we'll cover China. China has two different schemes for Rojas. There is the general China Rojas 2.0 this is a mandatory scheme and it's a self-declaration. You can use European or international test reports. It doesn't have to be in-country testing for this scheme. And there is a labeling aspect, which I'll show you in just a moment. The other scheme is called China Voluntary Rojas Certification. And this is for 12 specific products. So it's not for everything, but this scheme has additional requirements and additional marking. So the reports being accepted depends on which scheme you fall under. So most products that are China Rojas 2.0 will accept the European or IEC, International Rojas Test Reports, but the 12 
special products require testing to the Chinese standards. If you're getting certification, that is. Um, testing requirements um, also vary, as I said, um, for from each scheme. The 2.0 can be any lab, but the um, 12 special products in the voluntary scheme will require uh, testing to be done in a lab in China. And as you can see, China is using only the first six substances currently. So this is a list of the products that fall under each scheme. The co first column on the left is for China Rojas 2.0. You can see this is a wide range of products and it's uh, the, the majority of, of products fall under this with the exception of automotive electronic products. Those are out of scope. These um, are all the self-declaration scheme. The middle column there, the second column, is the 12 special products that have um, additional requirements. So refrigerators, air conditioners, washing machines, and so on. These um, products have the additional testing requirement if you're going to do the voluntary certification, or there's still a self-declaration scheme available, but they have additional marking requirements. So here are the labeling requirements for the top section is the uh, general for Rojas 2.0. The green E symbol is for products that do not contain any hazardous substances exceeding the limits. And it means that it's a green environmentally friendly product that can be recycled. The orange symbol is for products that do contain some amount of hazardous substances that is over the limits, but can still be used safely during its environmental protection use period. And this is indicated by the 10 in the center of that circle, meaning 10 years in this case. There are different values that can be put into that circle depending on the product characteristics. After um, the, the time frame is up, so after 10 years, that product would enter into the recycling system. The next section is for the 12 specified products. And these marks are in addition to the green or orange symbol above. The marking on the left is for the voluntary certification. And the box that you see here would have the logo of the certification body that issued that certificate. Or you can choose a self-declaration option. So the label on the right is the same logo, but SDOC means self-declaration of conformity. Finally, there's one more scheme that is specific to the CQC, which is the largest certification body in China. They have a voluntary scheme that includes testing for all 10 hazardous substances. And um, in this case, the testing is done on the end product. Uh, no component approvals are allowed or not accepted for compliance. And the testing is done at a CQC accredited test lab. And then if you choose this scheme, you have the CQC Rojas mark shown there on the right. And again, this is in addition to the China Rojas 2.0 if the product falls under those product categories. The next region we will talk about is the Eurasian Economic Union. Here is the uh, summary of requirements. It's called EAEU ROHS. The list of countries that is included in this regulation are Russia, Belarus, Kazakhstan, Armenia, and Kyrgyzstan. We're currently not doing any work in Russia or Belarus and not obtaining certifications for those two countries due to the war, but we are keeping this uh, regulation in this slide deck because we do work for Kazakhstan, Armenia, and Kyrgyzstan. 
So this scheme is a bit different from the China scheme because this is a certification scheme versus a self-declaration scheme. Uh, it is mandatory for products in scope and uh, they do mirror the European regulations, although they only control the first six substances, not all 10. You, uh, you can submit EN or IEC test reports. You don't have to do in-country testing, although if you don't have in, uh, a full test report on your product, in-country testing is an option in any of those countries that I mentioned. And there is a labeling requirement. It falls in with the safety and EMC regulations for, for this region. So testing can be done at any uh, ISO 17025 accredited lab with the applicable standards in scope. The products that are in scope of EAEU are um, pretty vast. Most uh, electrical and electronic equipment are included. Um, you can see the full list here. It's not everything that's included in the European Rojas, but it is a, a good portion of that list. This scheme went into effect in uh, March of 2020, so it's already three years old. So most companies have already um, met the requirements if they already had European, or sorry, EAEU certification uh, for safety and EMC, they had to add the Rojas in March of 2020. 2020. Um, the certification can be acquired by either a report covering the main model or um, a full test report for all of the components within a product. I've also included some of the additional documentation that's required here, um, an ISO 9000 or other quality certificate for the factory, manual must be in Russian, um, actually, the manual must be in the official language of the country in which you're selling a product for all of these countries. The labeling requirements are at the bottom here. You use the EAC mark, which means Eurasian conformity. India has a um, interesting scheme. It is uh, introduced under the e-waste management system. When they first introduced this scheme, they were mandating in-country testing, but now they have changed the regulations so they accept European or IEC test reports instead of having to do the in-country testing. This is a self-declaration scheme and there are no labeling requirements. India is controlling only the first six substances. What kind of products are in scope? We have information technology and um, telecommunication products, as well as consumer electrical and electronics. The next country we're covering is Japan. Japan's scheme for ROHS is called JMOS. This is a mandatory certification scheme, um, or a mandatory scheme, but it is a self-declaration scheme. Uh, you do have to test to the national JIS standard. You can't submit European or IEC test reports in this case. And there is a labeling requirement. The uh, standard that is accepted is um, JIS C0950-2021. And um, any lab can do that testing as long as they are accredited with that standard in their scope.
The products that are in scope of the JMOS scheme are computers, air conditioners, TV, refrigerators, washing machines, clothes dryers, and microwaves. So just a short list of products. Japan has different labeling requirements depending on the condition of the product. So here you will see that the first scheme is if uh, some of the six substances are over the, the limit, then they're still allowed, but you have to notify that you have an excess amount of some of those substances, substances on the label. So in this case, you place this orange mark shown at the bottom of the screen on the product, and then you list what substances are over the limits. Um, so the XXYY that you can see there would be the initials for the different substances that would be over the limit. So it's interesting that the products are still allowed. It's less about the um, compliance to the limits and more about informing the consumers. The next scheme is for if some of the substances are over the target value but the product is exempt, then you need to register the uh, uh, product on the JAS website, but you don't have to use the orange mark. These products, because they're exempt, they can use the J Moss green mark on a voluntary basis. But the key here is that you have to register the product on the JIS website. And then finally, condition three is if no substances are over the target value, then you can use this voluntary J Moss green mark and no need to use the orange mark and no need to register the product on the on the website if it's fully compliant. So in summary here, the orange mark is mandatory, the green mark is voluntary. And if you have any restricted substances over the limit, you must disclose those on the JIS website. Our next focus country is Korea. So Korea, um, it's split into two categories. It's um, electronics and appliances have six substances that are controlled, but vehicles only restrict four substances. So here it's the Korea Roja scheme. It is mandatory. It's a self-declaration scheme and test reports from any third-party accredited test lab can be used. In-country testing is not mandatory. The standard is the, K the Korean version, KSC version of IEC 62321. So here you can see the list of products that on the left have um, control of the first six substances and the products on the right under vehicles. Uh, this is for passenger cars, vans, and trucks under three and a half tons. Only the first four substances are controlled in that case. So Korea is constantly adding new products and new hazardous substances to the regulation. In 2021, they added these um, substances in plastics and uh, additional products in um, January of 2021 as well. So a lot of your office equipment, food processors, air purifiers, heaters, fitness equipment, these are um, new to the regulation as of 2021. I think you can expect that uh, most countries will follow that trend in that they'll continue to add products if they only control six, eventually they will control all 10 and um, they'll continue to add products to the controlled product list in each scheme. Next country is Saudi Arabia. So Saudi Arabia has um, 
a scheme called KSA ROHS. It's fairly new. It is a mandatory scheme, and this does require certification from the authority. It um, is not a self-declaration scheme. They do accept European or IEC test reports, and those can be done at any accredited lab with the standards in scope. Um, it doesn't have to be in-country testing. A note here is that the report can be either on the end device or it can be on three critical components of the product. So Saudi Arabia is implementing their Rojas regulation in phases. So currently they have implemented small and large household appliances information technology equipment and lighting. Coming up later this year, they will add uh, tools and equipment, games and entertainment devices and sports equipment, and um, in December, monitoring and control tools. And I think you can continue to expect them to add categories every few months. Singapore is the um, next country that we're covering. Their scheme is under the Environmental Protection and Management Act. Uh, it's called SG Rojas. It is a mandatory scheme. It's a self-declaration scheme. Unless a product is exceeding the limits, then it becomes a certification scheme. Um, European or international test reports are accepted, so no in-country testing is required, and Singapore doesn't have any labeling requirements. They control just the first six substances. The um, products that are in scope for Singapore are um, mobile phone, computers, refrigerators, air conditioners, panel TV, and washing machine. So just a small list of products. Jim, I paused here because I see that it says what kind of products are in scope for the EAEU. <laughs> That's the wrong scheme. Um, so I don't know if you can change the slide when you do the um, overlay or what needs to happen there. Sorry, I was trying to get my um, mic to work so you can hear me. Um, yeah, I'll see what I can That's do. Okay. I, I might be able to just to pop something over the top of it. Oh, you okay. That would be fine. Be. I mean, this whole... Yeah. This whole sentence can just be deleted. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Sounds good. We can continue on. Okay. Our next country is Taiwan. Taiwan's uh, Rojas scheme is called BSMI Rojas. It is a mandatory scheme and it is part of the uh, safety and EMC BSMI certification scheme. It is not a self-declaration. They do allow European or international test reports to show conformity, and they will accept test reports from any accredited lab. It doesn't have to be in Taiwan. The labeling scheme follows the BSMI safety and EMC scheme as well. So the, the test report that is accepted is the um, CNS test report, but it's harmonized with the international standard. And so international or European reports can be accepted because of that harmonization. Taiwan controls just that first uh, six products or substances. The products that are in scope for Taiwan are all EN, uh, ENE, which means electronic and electrical products. 
that are under the BSMI certification scheme, except for batteries. Everything else, uh, for example, household electronics, um, consumer electronics, household appliances, IT equipment, tools, and so on. These are the major categories of products that are under the BSMI safety and EMC scheme. So they just added Rojas to that same list of products. The labeling requirements look like this. Um, if you do not have any of the six hazardous substances exceeding the limits, then you simply add the letters ROHS to your BSMI label. So this BSMI label would be for safety and EMC and the R or the T just uh, denotes the type of a certification that it has. Um, so that's the standard marking. And then when you're ROHS compliant, you just add those ROHS letters to it. On the right hand column there, this uh, marking is used for products that have substances that exceed the limits. And um, there is a uh, a place to put what products or what substances are exceeding the limits in parentheses here next to the ROHS letters. So there are some exemptions and in those cases uh, you don't have to do this marking. Um, I should note that the ROHS letters and the BSMI mark should be together and the size and characters need to be proportional to what you see here. In addition to that labeling, you also need to um, place a location uh, or marking of presence on the product or in the user manual or uh, on the label. So this is, this marking of presence is a grid um, you can kind of see what it looks like in the lower right hand corner. It's where you would indicate any um, concentrations that are over the limit for any of those six substances. And then that grid is placed in one of these places that accompanies the product. And this is only required if you have an excess amount. Um, if you don't have any excess amounts, the only place this grid needs to be is in the user manual. It doesn't need to be anywhere else. But if you do have an excess um, product or limit, then it should be in one of these places. And that's up to the manufacturer. The next country we will cover is UAE, United Arab Emirates. UAE's scheme is um, called UAE Rojas. It is under um, the ECAS certification, which is the organization that issues uh, safety certification as well. Or there's a voluntary scheme under the EQM, which is um, more of a quality management system scheme. So it is a certification, it's not a self-declaration, so you do need a certificate uh, from ECAS or EQM. The basis is uh, test reports, either IEC test reports or European test reports from any ISO 17025 accredited lab with the applicable standard and scope. Uh, UAE accepts uh, either a full test report for the product, or you can perform a risk assessment according to IEC 63000, plus provide ROHAS test reports of three critical components that are identified through that risk assessment. Um, this is definitely extra work, but it could save some cost in not having to perform testing on the full product if you have some component uh, test reports. Um, UAE is one of the few countries that controls all 10 substances under their mandatory scheme. The products in scope are um, 
vast, large household and small household appliances, information technology, consumer equipment, lighting. Um, and it looks like it's a lot of products. You can see at the bottom, all other electrical and electronic equipment not covered by those 10 categories. <laughs> That's the everything else bucket. Um, it seems like a lot, but this actually matches exactly with the European technical regulations. So they are um, up to date with the European uh, directive. Uh, they phased in their implementation and now all products are um, covered. I don't think they are adding any additional products unless Europe decides to add additional products and they will follow suit. They do have exemptions and this is also the case with other schemes, including European schemes. Uh, and the exemptions are for military, large scale, stationary, uh, industrial equipment, vehicles, um, non-road, mobile machinery, active and plantable medical devices, uh, photovoltaic panels, R&D equipment, and general lighting products. So um, the European regulation also exempts these products. And the labeling requirements are here. The ECAS approval is um, at the top and you can use any of those marking colors. It has to be just um, a contrast color to your product label. And the EQM mark would be for the voluntary certification. You put that Emirates quality mark on the product. Ukraine is similar to UAE in that it also controls all 10 hazardous substances. The Ukraine Rojas scheme is called um, the technical regulation for Rojas, and they do accept the European directive. So they're also in line with the EU Rojas regulations. Uh, it's a mandatory scheme. Uh, it is a certification, not self-declaration, and obviously European test reports are accepted. And the labeling requirement is the same as the uh, safety and EMC and wireless labeling. I will show you that in just a moment. The products and scope are also the same as UAE and same as the European regulations along with the same exemptions. The labeling requirements for Ukraine are um, actually the same as the safety and wireless regulations. So uh, you can see several renditions of this um, mark and some have letters below and some do not. The letters below are for all RF products or any non-RF products that used a um, Ukraine certification body to issue the certificate. Um, so these, these X's that you can see below the mark are the uh, designation of that certification body. And if you did a self-declaration for a non-radio product, then there would be no certification um, to be listed. It's just registered on the Ukraine website. Um, the mark on the right also has the technical regulation listed. So that's an, another option as well. Uh, the final country that we are covering is Vietnam. Uh, Vietnam has a um, Roja scheme, it's called Vietnam Circular and um, a bunch of letters and numbers. This is where they published the requirements. It is a mandatory scheme and a self-declaration. It is um, CE test reports, so IEC or EN test reports are accepted and in-country testing is not required. Currently, the uh, IEC 62321 test report is being used, but Vietnam has been working on their own 
national standard for Rojas. But until they publish that standard, it is um, going to continue to be just the IEC or EN standard. Um, and this has been the case for the last three years, and they still haven't published a standard. So I'm not sure what the uh, horizon looks like for when they will publish a new standard. Maybe they won't even do it. And Vietnam controls just the first six substances. The products in scope are listed here. So um, pretty typical of some of the first few schemes. There are no marking requirements for Vietnam. Um, however, you do have to publicize your declaration of conformity in one of the ways that is described in the circular. So those ways are on your company website, in the manual, uh, on electronic media that goes with the product or on the product or packaging itself. And um, that wraps up our list of countries for Global Rojas. I'm sure you noticed that many countries have started with the first six substances and have not yet added the other four, but I think you can expect the trend to move in that same direction as the European Union with countries evolving their programs to include all 10 restricted substances and adding products to the list so that they eventually match what is um, controlled under the European requirements. As in any other product approval scheme, this is always challenging and hard to keep up with. So to help you stay informed, you can connect with us. Download our GMA ebook, which is um, updated twice per year and has at least 20, 32 countries and regions covered with all of their national certification schemes. And you can also subscribe to our Essentials newsletter. We're here to help you understand the requirements specific to your products and answer your questions, and of course, help you through that process. We look forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much for listening and taking time out of your day today. That's a wrap. <laughs>